www.ghostbusters.com What's up guys, this is Hans from the Eclectic Podcast, and today we're going to be taking a look at KO MP11 Destron New Leader Starscream. Uh, real quick, I wanted to kind of give you guys kind of a glimpse of what he looks like, and let you kind of determine whether or not he's worth the money. Real quick, we'll take a look at the packaging. It is your typical uh, mess piece style packaging. Uh, the photos look a little bit, I don't know, more saturated than what the original photos were on the original box, but still looks good nonetheless. Uh, he does come with his cape and crown, or at least he's supposed to. Uh, it does have, you know, your typical kind of masterpiece thing there at the bottom. Side of the box, just star screen. Uh, other side of the box, same thing. Back of the box shows you his accessories and everything that he comes with. Um, and of course, I mean, it, this is supposed to include everything that the MP11 did. So, we'll see. We'll open this guy up and we'll take a look and check out the build quality and everything else. Um, it's going to be hard to tell the difference between this guy and uh, a real one just by looking at the box. Unless you had them side by side, I think you'd be hard pressed to really know the difference between the two. Um, because the, the packaging is almost identical. They do such a good job of knocking those off. And it, it's kind of unfortunate that they do do that because I think it really hinders people that, that don't want to get suckered into buying a KO. Uh, if you know you're getting a KO, it's fine. But if you don't know, that's where some, some leery things can take place. But anyways, let's go ahead and let's open this guy up and take a look at what's inside. All right, here he is out of the package. Real quick, we'll go over everything that he comes with. We do have his instruction booklet. Uh, actually, pretty nice representation of the instruction booklet that came with the original. Um, you can see that artwork on the front. It looks a little bit washed out. Not so much on the camera, but actually when you see it in, in person, it doesn't look quite as, uh, quite as good. And of course, instructions for transformation. Uh, back photos look a little bit grainy. Again, you probably can't tell that uh, from from the the camera, the way that the camera captures it. But you do have that. You do have a spec card, which yeah, looks okay. It's kind of bent. MP11 star screen. Tech specs on the back. Kind of what we come to expect. You have your pilot. Looks okay. Just cast in a clear blue plastic. You have his crown, which looks pretty good. Uh, applications were pretty nicely done. A mm. few marks here and there. The paint looks pretty reasonably applied. You got some fingerprint stuff going on right there in the front. <clears throat> Uh, you have his shoulder pieces for his cape, so you get those. And then of course you get the cape itself. Uh, it looks fairly decent. You got some swirling in the plastic going on here. It does do the open up thing. Uh, and we'll, we'll take a look at that here in a little bit. So you get a fairly decent number of accessories with him. Uh, let's go ahead and let's get a close-up look at the figure. Uh, we'll start off with the upper portion of the figure. Tolerances are going to be the, the word of the day with this guy. Uh, there's just things that don't, it doesn't fit right. Uh, there's a lot of engineering that goes into Takara Transformers, uh, especially with the Masterpiece, and they missed a lot of those marks with this guy. So let's go ahead and let's take a look here. He has this weird inability to stay up. I'm not sure if there's a screw in there that's just loose that I might be able to tighten, but that he's always leaning back. 
Um, null rays really don't want to stay in place. You do have um, no paint detail going on inside of these pylons by his head. So he's constantly looking up. Even if you tilt his head down, I mean, he's got just a weird uh, posture to him. I'll take a look at his head sculpt real quick. His head sculpt actually looks pretty good. Um, it's on a ball joint. You get It's kind of tight, but you can turn it left and right. Uh, you do get some side-to-side -side action in there. Uh, of course, the head does do the springy thing to get through the the fuselage whenever you're going through transformation. But I think the, the paint job on the head sculpt itself, I think that actually looks pretty good. Um, like I said, these pylons, I kind of wish there was some paint detail going on inside of there. That would have been kind of nice. Arms on ratchets, which work fine. Uh, they can go out. Come back in. This part up here where uh, we'll hook up for the cape keeps on falling out. Not, the tolerance there is shot. You do have double hinged elbow which still does have that nice piston look down there at the bottom. Hands are the typical masterpiece style uh, seeker hands where they are on a swivel. You get the singular articulating thumb the three and then the single digit here. Um, unlike most of the masterpiece uh, seekers that I've gotten, these hands are actually looks like they're correct. They will fold in properly and I didn't have to rotate those around. So that was kind of nice. You do have bicep swivel. Uh, you still have his chest missiles. He does do a pretty good job of holding that kind of all in place. Whenever you're moving stuff around, oh, there's kind of coming off there. It lifts up a little bit, but doesn't detach horribly. Um, oh, come on. Uh, you do have, I guess, an ab crunch because of the looseness of the figure. These parts normally they're supposed to come up and click into place, um, and this side is just awful about that. It will fall out uh, along with this wing. If you push it too far, it'll just pop out of place. This will not hold. You do have upper thigh swivel. You have a knee. That'll get you a pretty good range back. Get you back about that far. So that's pretty good. You still have no real pivot. I mean, you have that slide, and then you do have the heel spur, of course. So that's that's a plus. Let's go ahead and let's see how these uh, his cape accessories work on him. The shoulder pads, the way you want to do them, they've got these little clips on the inside of here, on the top of his shoulders. He has a little receiving section for him. This one is the one that's loose on this side. Keeps on falling down. Let's see if this gives it any stability. That seems to hold okay. There he is with his cape and crown, and actually that looks pretty good. It looks like that uh, helps support some of that backwards lean that he's got. Not a whole lot, but it, it is better than what it was. And real quick, too, just to let you know, the, the way that the cape still works the same as it should, um, you can open that and close that from the backpack there. It does still have the articulating arm where you can get like, some movement in the cape if you so desired and it actually locks in fairly secure what we'll go ahead and do right now is we'll go ahead and get this stuff off of him and we'll get him transformed into his alt mode we'll start off with the feet rotate this around flip it up 
Same thing on this side. Rotate around, flip it up. Lift up these engine compartments. Just flip these back. Close this back down. Same thing on this side. Close that back down. You can flatten out that. Pull this down since it doesn't want to stay up anyways. Same thing on that side. Peg these legs together. And that's kind of it for the legs. We'll go ahead and we'll start working on the upper section here. Detach this from the back area just to give you some a little bit of clearance. I'll tab these wings from the back. Pull that section up. Get these kind of untabbed and slightly out of the way. It's not going to work out so well. Flip up these arms. Rotate this up. And I do apologize. This is going to be really kind of finicky uh, all the way through while we go through this. We can go ahead. We can start working this nose cone and head back through here. Just make sure you got the clearances that you need. Which is an issue with this guy, like I've said. Paint job's okay on him, but he does have a lot of other issues going on. Get that through there. Go ahead and open up his cockpit. Rotate that down. Condense those head pieces. Just kind of work them through the back. Come on, there we go. Get that through there. Like I said, this is incredibly tough for some reason. There we go. It feels like I'm going to break it every time I have to do that. Make sure those pylons are still flipped back. Come back into this chest cavity area. Work these around on the armatures so you get them kind of in the center. Same thing on the opposite side. That's the part that's loose right there. That needs to be pound it in more. We can go ahead and we can condense the legs here. I apologize for some of this mess here that we got going on. Okay, let's work on the arms here. I'll just leave that untabbed. Turn that until you can see the screws. Collapse in the hands. I like to do it. I like to rotate the hands to where you see just the back of the hand itself. Fold it up and in. And then move this in upon itself. Make sure the hand's square. Same thing on this side. Just kind of square everything up inside of there. Now we can fold down these tabs here. They're supposed to fold into the back of the wings, or they're supposed to tab onto the back of the wings just to give them, keep them up. Get the wings all tabbed in proper. Come up on the arm. Tab into the side of the jet. Just trying to get everything tabbed in. Flip up the ailerons back here. Peg the null rays into the wing. Same thing with this side. So here he is all transformed and he looks okay. Uh, I do wish they kind of went with a darker color on the nose cone. Um, and again, the tolerance issues. The biggest thing I have uh, issue with in jet mode like this is that that weak waist causes the back to be really floppy. Which is funny because typically on the Takara one, I have a problem with this uh, falling down all the time. I don't have that problem with this guy. It's just the back, <laughs> if he takes off, he's a little bit limp in the rear. So that's kind of problematic. I mean, just sitting there, he'd be fine. If you had a flight stand for him, like uh, one that you can order on eBay that says Starscream on it, uh, it supports from here, so you would have that that going on back there. You've got the red and green lights on the wings. Tampo printed uh, Decepticon logos look pretty good. Some of this stuff, the paint's kind of missing. The articulating thrusters are still kind of there. Not the way that they should be. 
You still can open up the rear, obviously, and get that engine detail that you had in the past. So you can still kind of show that off. He still has his air brake that you can pop up. Nose cone still uh, hides the radar dish. Get it separate there. Uh, cockpit opens up. Let's see if our pilot sits. Pilot sits in there just fine. In closing, I'll say this. This guy is very expensive, uh, even for a knockoff. It's $129, I believe. I got it from TF Direct. Uh, I honestly believe if you can, for the money, go ahead and try and find, even if it is an extra, you know, 30 bucks, 40 bucks. I don't know what it would cost. Find the American uh, Hasbro release of Starscream. Uh, I think you'd be much better off with that. You don't need the cape. You don't need the crown. You don't need all those frills. Just get Starscream. Just get that version of him. It's a much, much better version of this bot. And, I mean, it is a KO. I mean, it, they could bury. You may get one of these and you don't have that issue at the back. Because that's really the, the, the break it thing for this guy, is that. It makes him funky in bot mode. It makes him funky in jet mode. If it wasn't for that issue, he'd be okay. I just, I can't tell you, I can't recommend this guy for the money that you'd spend. He costs way too much. The quality, maybe if it was $80, I mean, you'd be saving 100 bucks then over the, the official Takara release. I think maybe then, maybe, uh, if you just wanted to add it to complete a secret set or something like that. But otherwise, no. This is a complete pass all the way around. But, anyways, guys, uh, thank you for watching. Peace out, and we will talk to you soon. Bye. <laughs>